So I was uh, realizing earlier this evening that I hadn't done an overall wrap-up of the Illumos distributions I looked at. I'd promised it a while ago. Hadn't done one. Wanted to do that. This is it. Uh, apologies up front if my voice sounds a little funny. I'm coming down with something. Um, hope it's not the flu. Fingers crossed. And uh, so we'll go through the Illumos distributions that I've played around with a little bit. A uh, little bit of my take on them. And kind of talk about what they might be good for. And what sort of the parallel Linux distribution might be. Right. So if you use whatever flavor of Linux, spin a Linux, distribution GNU Linux, let's be correct, uh, you might want to start with this uh, Illumos variant. But it might give you a similar experience. Uh, first things first, all of these have all of the Illumos core technologies. So you've got zones, fantastic technology. You have crossbow. We're, we're going to do some more on crossbow because it is it solves some, some really interesting problems, and you can do some cool stuff, and it's super easy. Um, you've got the, you know, the iSCSI and the fiber channel. I forget the name, you know, the, the code word for it. Uh, but you have the storage server stuff, so NFS, iSCSI. Um, you can do the, uh, the fiber channel stuff. You have Dtrace, which, again, I, I need to do more with. I don't, but when you are in that dilly of a pickle in production... Deep trace can really save your bacon. So you got another one, which is fantastic, SMF, which if you're frustrated with things like System D, SMF is a breath of fresh air. Um, and SMF, of course, came first. It's not like that was the set follow-on to be like, let's fix the problems with this startup now. They, the problems were already solved. So SMF is a great way to manage your startup. Uh, again, super easy, resilient, fantastic. I'm sure I'm missing some stuff here about uh, some of the Illumos core technologies. ZFS, of course. How could I forget ZFS? Which is, you know, again, once you once you get in the hang of using it, um, you will never want to go back. Right? Snapshots, sending, receiving. Um, creating volumes, especially, you know, doing things like virtualization and emulation, snapshotting and volumes are super handy. So all these will have those core technologies. All these these different uh, distributions of the Lumis will have those core technologies. But there are some differences. Start with Open Indiana, which if you're not familiar with Solaris um, or Open Solaris or Lumis, this may be a good place to start. Um, you get up-to-date software. You get large catalog of packages. You get graphical installer from their live DVD. So it's really super straightforward to get up and running with a you know, X Windows system uh, and have graphical tools for a lot of a lot of functions. If you're coming from something like an Ubuntu, might be a great place to start uh, or something similar, right? So a, a kind of workstation environment this is a great spin. Not to say you can't, and you absolutely can do your normal server stuff uh, with Open Indiana. Works great for that as well. And in fact, they have a text mode installer if you don't even want to worry about uh, the graphical environment at the outset. A couple things I wasn't quite sold on. You do get you do get KVM, so you can virtualize. You don't get LX zones, and we'll talk more in depth about LX zones a little bit later. Um, they are uh, kind of a Linux zone, right? So you can run Linux binaries in a zone, all the benefits of a zone, but you're running Linux binaries. So system call virtualization, absolutely fantastic. Open Indiana doesn't have it. I don't see any reason why they couldn't add it, and they may in the future. But again, great gentle introduction to Illumos is Open Indiana. Recommend it. Uh, also works great on laptops. Um, running on one of my laptops uh, that had no CD drive, so I couldn't install, and wouldn't boot off USB, so I couldn't install Triblix, which we'll look at later, uh, running Open Indiana. So it uh, will work great on laptops. Next one is OmniOS, which is now transitioned to a community-supported, run by a, 
a company earlier, or so mainly supported by one. This is probably your best bet for a, a, a server, like a rock solid server OS. Um, it again is really similar to Solaris. It comes a little bit more stripped down, right? So you, you install, you don't get much, right? You don't get graphical tools, you have to configure things manually. It's pretty easy. You can see my video on it. Uh, to get network set up, installing packages uses the same package management facility that Open Indiana does, which is the IPS packages. Not not too fond of them, but if you're needing just a server operating system, OmniOS is it. You can add X Windows, you can add other network drivers if you want. Uh, so you certainly can get a graphical display up and running, um, but it is out of the box lean and mean and focused. Um, it can do LX zones, it can do KVM. So you can really get a lot of mileage out of it for doing some virtualization. And I am running my home, some of my home services are on an OmniOS machine. Uh, and it has been nothing but reliable, upgrades are easy. Oh, one of the Illumos technologies forgot to mention, boot environments. Um, and they go hand in hand with ZFS. So, you know, you do an update that breaks things, not really a problem anymore. So OmniOS, if you're, you know, if you want something that's similar to Red Hat or CentOS on the server side, OmniOS is probably it, right? You need to run a web server, a database, um, you know, on bare metal. This is probably uh, your bet. Storage server, OmniOS. Um, so... That's OmniOS. Move on to my personal favorite uh, in the workstation space is Triblix. And it's it's one of the smaller ones, but it ticks a lot of boxes. Um, as we see right here, retro style modern components. It does feel very much of the 90s in terms of just the, the ambiance of it. But the bits and pieces... Uh, the parts of it are actually quite modern. Uh, and you see there is a another spin of it, let's call it, that uses uh, parts from OmniOS to uh, make it able to run LX zones. So you can do LX zones here. I don't think KVM is available. So you have to use something like VirtualBox to do your, uh, your hardware virtualization. I like Triblix for a, a few reasons. One, it has LX zones now. It feels like a, say a Unix workstation should feel. Uh, it uses System 5 packages, which, I don't know, for whatever reason, I'm a little bit more comfortable with. There's a lot less overhead than something like IPS, although in modern world, it probably doesn't really matter. There's a handy utility called Zap that's included here. It lets you do all your updates, package installs. Um, install groups of packages called overlays, and also create zones. So, other than SmartOS, which we'll talk about next, quickest way to create zones is with Triblix. So you need to say, I need a Postgres instance. I can spin up a, a zone with a zone template, matter of seconds, get that up in place um, from a one command line. Whereas in the other, uh, the others, you do have to do a little bit more configuration to get your zone up and running. Uh, Triblix is very cool. Again, ideally suited for me in the workstation space. Uh, it's currently running on one of my dev machines. It is, uh, like I said, absolutely fantastic. There's a ton of packages out there for it. Um, and of course, I forgot to mention, you can use package source on all these. And Joyent has built, uh, they, they use package source for SmartOS. We'll talk about that next. But, of course, the package source stuff is, is public, so you can use their packages for Lumos on any of these. Right? So the package you don't want, you probably should be using their package source uh, to pick it up. So Triblix is, like I say, my favorite for the for workstation use. OmniOS, if I was running server. But the one I've really kind of, I don't know, fallen in love with because... It just makes things that used to take a few minutes um, 
take a few seconds. So it is fantastic. One thing for Triblix, your kind of Linux parallel would be something like Slackware. Right? If you're a Slackware fan, give Triblix a try. There may be a little bit more manual. You don't get a graphical installer. And the installer is still pretty painless. It's, it's one command to, in, to install it, and it comes on a live DVD. Um, but again, it, it feels very, very much in the 90s, but you still get SMF and zones and ZFS, all that stuff. SmartOS, again, has really solved a lot of problems for me. Uh, I use it for all my home virtualization. It is a little bit different than the other ones, right? You wouldn't use it to run a general purpose server, not, not for workstation use. It is strictly a hypervising system, right? So it, it's for running VMs, either system call VMs, right? So, um, so zones or, uh, you know, Kimu, right? So KVM, uh, I guess we can call it hardware virtualization. It does both of those really well. There's a JSON interface. A lot of it's written in Node if you have to go and monkey with it. I've actually had to make some tweaks to it to support some of the things I've been I've been doing, and that was painless, right? So this SmartOS makes it incredibly painless to spin up n number of virtual machines, again, of any flavor, be it Zone uh, or LX Zone, right? So you can do Linux uh, zones or KVM images. It's really lightweight. It runs off a USB stick um, and only stores a tiny amount of data onto your disk. And that makes upgrades super easy, right? You pull your, your old version USB stick, you put a new one in, you reboot, you're up and running on the latest and greatest. There's a repository with a bunch of images uh, available of all different sorts and flavors of zones and uh, chemo images to run. So different stuff of Linux, you get FreeBSD. Those are all obviously for the chemo um, images. Uh, you also get zone images. You can snapshot and clone, and it makes all this stuff painless and with a JSON interface. Um, so it is super handy. I really like it. Um, and again, the ability to modify it, there are a couple things that weren't working for me. I was able to modify it really easily to get it to work for what I'm trying to do, which arguably is not a case I don't think the people who built it were looking at. So this I can't really compare to any of the rest because it, it isn't for general purpose. Um, obviously, the machines you spin up in it are general purpose. So you can spin up a an Illumos machine, right? Just a stock, you know, base Illumos. Um, and that uses package source and you can, you know, you can have your database or your web server. Your, you can't do, I don't think you can do NFS in a zone, but you can have that stuff running in an Illumos zone side by side with some of your Linux stuff in an LX zone. So I'm running, say, a Rango DB in an LX zone. And then for testing, I have some CentOS images running as uh, a Chemo. And so I have some CentOS going as Kimu. My firewall is sitting on there in an OpenBSD Kimu image. Uh, so I have to say, absolutely fantastic. And couldn't do without this. Um, solved a lot of problems for me. And so there isn't really a Linux distro that can, I, I don't think, compared. I mean, there are those hypervisor ones, and probably the closest. And this is going to be uh, an awful slur. Hopefully no one who worked on SmartOS ever hears this, but I mean, the closest you can compare it to be is something like OpenStack, where you want an API for virtualization. Um, except whereas OpenStack is painful, uh, SmartOS is a joy to use. So um, again, highly recommended. It has some steeper, uh, I guess the hardware requirements are, are roughly the same. Um, I did encounter some issues with a is that a Broadcom network interface on this machine, but I mean putting in a an Intel gigabit solved everything. So highly recommend it. That's kind of my wrap up of the the Illumis distributions I've looked at. I think they're all fantastic. I recommend you grab one, play around with, throw it in a virtual machine at first if you want to check for hardware compatibility. Um, basically, we're at the point where we've been on the Intel Core 
i whatever platform for what almost a decade now i don't know maybe more than a decade and and roughly any of those will run all these things fine um so whereas you can't go and grab a you know really ancient you know 486 and, and use these um you can uh anything within the past like five or six years will work just fine one thing i did forget to mention i think these are all 64-bit with the exception of triblix i think triblix will still support 32-bit if you have one of those uh let's say dinosaurs um and triblix will also support spark uh that's something i do need to play around with is running see if it'll it'll work on my sunblade 1000 so again, I apologize, this probably isn't the most exciting thing, but it's kind of my, my wrap up on my thoughts. And if there's demand, we can revisit any of these um, as things have changed. Because again, Triblix was, that was close to two years ago when I, I put up a video about that. Things have changed. So for instance, LX zones have been added in. Um, you know, Open Indiana has had some changes since we looked at it. Uh, SmartOS been evolving but i don't know much about it from you know two years ago uh they've all been changing the big change obviously omni os uh, community edition and i'm glad that exists um so not really a whole lot else to add uh hopefully what i've said makes a little bit of sense and the cold medicine hasn't ruined my mind too much um but please leave a comment below let me know if you have played around with some of these which one you like um and if you haven't and you do because of this, let me know that as well, because I'd, I'd like to see the installed base in the community grow, because these are really great bits of software and absolutely fantastic stuff. Thanks for watching.